Did the my protein gain train slow to a halt or is the company simply slowing up at the next station so it could pick up more supporters? Throughout this content, hopefully give you guys a ton of information that can help you answer that kind of introductory statement. To do so, I'm going to be leaning heavily on the latest quarterly earnings from the Hut Group or THG. So that earnings report conference call, any associated kind of publicly disclosed information, I'm going to be compiling all of that into a ton of Kind of strategic insights, information that will be valuable to you regardless if you're only interested in the supplement industry, global supplement industry as a whole, or more of the broader global commerce environment. If you're not too familiar at this point by THG, it's made up of a number of different divisions or segments. You have two owned brand portfolios that are in the categories of nutrition and beauty. You also have THG Ingenuity, which has two kind of components. They're utilized both with the own brands, but also white labeled for third party brands in infrastructure services and commerce services. There's also THG On Demand, which again is utilized both by owned brands and third party brands around personalization services. And then there's a catch-all other owned brand segment that does not cleanly fit into nutrition or beauty. Since I'm mostly interested in providing more information around THG Nutrition, the owner of my protein. A lot of the information in this content is going to skew towards that, but also THG Ingenuity, that is what makes really the whole portfolio special and what powers THG Nutrition. Those are going to be the two that I've covered probably the most, um, but I will cover each one of the other kind of divisions at various lengths. But I did want to start just overall at the financial overview of THG so you can understand the size of the company. Now, THG reports in British pounds, but the majority of my audience resides in the U.S. market. So I did the quick conversions of the currency. So every revenue number that you hear in this content will be U.S. dollars to help for comparative purposes with competitors. In the third quarter of 2021, THG had revenue of $691.4 million. That was up 38% year over year on a constant currency basis. If we pull this back into the first nine months, THG had total revenue of just under $2 billion, which was up 43.2% on a year-over-year -year constant currency basis. Those numbers look even more impressive if we look at this from a two-year stacked basis. Quarter three would be up 93.8, and on a nine-month basis, this would be up 94.6%. Now, just Looking at the divisional sales numbers, again, I'm going to kind of reshuffle these things to help with storytelling of the content. We'll start with the other division that includes a collection of high-end designer fashion brands, including Coggles, Also, and MyBag. In quarter three of this year, revenue was right around $27 million. That was up 24.7% year-over-year on a constant currency basis. THG On Demand had revenue around $41 million. Now, THG Beauty, which is actually the largest division of THG, and this is the digital first brand owner, retailer, and manufacturer in the prestige beauty market. It owns a portfolio of premium skincare and beauty lines such as Cult Beauty, Espa, and Paracone MD. Websites like Look Fantastic, Derm Store, and Beauty Subscription Box, Glossy Box. The revenue was $337.1 million in the quarter. That grew 61.1% year over year. And if we're looking at this as a two-year stacked perspective, it grew 135.7%. Those growth numbers are drastically inflated because of the M&A activity. One of those acquisitions was Cult Beauty on October 4th of this year, and they successfully migrated that to the Ingenuity platform ahead of schedule. This is really important and why I kind of always say that the Ingenuity platform really is what makes all of this extremely special. 
They delivered immediate improvements, including 30% uplift in conversion rates, a 6% uplift in average order values, and a 36% improvement in page load times and lower technology costs to serve. And before I get into the THG nutrition, I want to take a deep look at the THG Ingenuity platform. It is a unique end-to-end direct-to-consumer e-commerce platform that powers the growth of THG beauty and nutrition, but is also packaged as a -a software-as-a-service solution for large consumer brands such as Nestle, Coca-Cola, Nintendo, and Honda. In 2021, quarter three, it had $69.6 million in quarterly revenue. It was broken up into the two segments, like I mentioned. Infrastructure services makes up 78% of the nine-month THG Ingenuity total revenue. Commerce only makes up 22% of the nine-month THG Ingenuity total revenue, but this is where the real excitement is at. The commerce segment of THG Ingenuity is growing 150% year-over-year over the first nine months of 2021. There's been a record number of clients acquired in this quarter, which was up 50% from the last quarter. 59% of the Q3 revenue was recurring in nature, providing strong visibility on fiscal year 2022. And based on a deployment of 85% of the order book through 2022, annualized run rate for the commerce side of THG Ingenuity should be around $150 million by the time they hit quarter four of 2022. THG Ingenuity is only scratching the surface of its long-term potential. With massive investments from SoftBank, this will easily be, in my opinion, a multi-billion dollar revenue business in the next five to seven years. Now for the last half of this video, I wanna talk about THG Nutrition. This is a group of digital first nutrition brands, which is primarily made up of my protein, but also it's sub brands like my vitamins and my vegan. In the quarter three of 2021, THG Nutrition had revenue of right around $217 million. That was up 13.4% year over year on a constant currency basis and 64.1% on a two year stack perspective. This is really solid performance if we think about 2020 quarter three, which was the highest growth quarter for THG Nutrition. With over 80% of the revenue coming from repeat customers of THG Nutrition, despite the growth rates kind of slowing below the expected or projected 20% year over year on a quarterly basis perspective, THG as a company is still extremely bullish on the nutritional categories. And if you do look at this from the first nine months, THG Nutrition had revenues of just around $664 million, which was up 24.2% on a constant currency basis compared to last year. And on that two-year stack basis, it's up just over 66%. I want to talk a little bit around the marketplace dynamics that are happening right now. Obviously, a lot of things are a mess, but I covered in the last piece of content just about six weeks ago on THG and THG nutrition, my protein, all of that, how that kind of chaos that was happening with the supply chain, labor market challenges, um, inflationary cost pressures, a lot of those things are going on. It actually could be a positive tailwind for THG and maybe not necessarily from an absolute perspective, but from a relative perspective, because I think they're much better positioned than the competitive landscape. THG owns more of their overall value chain. So they do have less exposure to the outside environment. THG Nutrition specifically is vertically integrated with six production facilities that spans from traditional formats of supplements, so capsules, pills, powders, and also nutritional bars or foods and beverages. Brighter Foods, which was the bar manufacturer that MyProtein has used for a while, they acquired them. Also, Claremont, which is UK's leading independent flavor manufacturing and development laboratory for relevant categories. And then also Berryman's, which has the canning and liquids capabilities. All of these being acquired recently, but also integration being kind of completed or, or close to being completed at this time is extremely valuable because it speeds up 
the time to market for localized new products also cuts down on a lot of the associated costs. And outside of the production, THD also has a massive global fulfillment network that is going through a complete automation overhaul with the help of AutoStore. These combined strategic decisions towards increased logistics, automation, and an ongoing cost improvement program will help them offset pretty much all of the recent inflationary environment and rising commodity costs. THD Nutrition expects to have really strong inventory levels ahead of some of the peak kind of trading sales periods around the holidays. Supplements aren't necessarily a holiday gifting type item, but as consumers get used to purchasing things early and, and seeing things in stock and really kind of buying ahead of their consumption, I do think there's going to be more purchasing towards the new year, new you in Q4 for Q1. So my protein or any of the brands within THG Nutrition being in stock will be a competitive advantage. And if they can hold on to their current pricing levels and, and making sure that they have all the other kind of boxes checked, they should be in an extremely strong position to gain customers going into the kind of extended important period of Q1 leaning into the end of Q4 now. Now, some of the other things that THD Nutrition, my protein has really been doing very well recently. They have started to lean more on some of the live events that they have wanted to do over the last couple of years, but obviously the COVID-19 effect has not allowed them to do so. THD has a division called Experiences, also another division called Society that helps with influencers, experiential events, branded events, things like that. So my protein did throw 20 global events in Q3. These events included a live in-person version of the My Protein personal training offering that they held in Manchester and plan to bring to more cities in the future. They also held a kind of experiential apparel launch that was in conjunction with the London UK retailer Wit fitness in one of their stores that also has a gym, boxing gym, all those types of things. So consumers can actually try on some of the My Protein clothing. They can actually put it through a test drive, see how it would work in an actual workout. And to kind of add some extra value, My Protein brought in a ton of their influencers and made this a one-of-a-kind type experience for those customers. Now talking about like kind of physical retail and maybe some expansion that could happen globally in the future. My Protein has really been a digital native brand, but they did recently launch an on-the-go section of merchandising in Asta. For Americans that might not have ever heard of Asta, it's a 600 location plus British supermarket chain that was owned by Walmart for a time between 1999 until the current year when it was sold back to private equity and private investors. Kind of going along the lines of retail and some of the things that my protein has been doing, I want to also talk about live commerce through a collaboration with Fivo, an app that helps brands and entrepreneurs share their products and services with customers through live interactive and shoppable videos. My protein hosted its first live shopping event for customers. To me, live commerce is the future of where commerce is going. When you take all of the commerce away from just necessity and utility and you add a layer of entertainment, you add community, you add a ton of those things, it starts to become more enjoyable, more engaging. And for my protein, they have really done a great job in increasing their community, the engagement around their community. If you look at just their numbers recently, they're quite impressive for the category. Across their social community, their numbers are around 6.5 million. They have over 1 million subscribers globally across their different owned YouTube channels. And they just crossed over 3 million app downloads for their My Protein app. So in this live shopping experience, My Protein did offer some exclusive new type products, but above and beyond that, had the community be involved in a live body weight workout. If you're trying to maybe peg this to something previously, live commerce really is 
thinking about like your parents, or your grandparents, QVC or home shopping network, but adding a digital layer to it, adding more of an interaction, two-way type of relationship. And those community building capabilities is what really makes this extremely valuable for brands to lean into right now. Transitioning into some of like digital value ads around the shopping experience, this is an extremely important thing to think about. Any brand, any retailer to think about, why is a customer shopping with us? You should be answering that question and reinforcing that daily. Whatever is that unique selling proposition should be really doubling down, tripling down on that right now. Consumers, especially when we're thinking about this in a digital sense, they can shop, they can switch very easily. There's not much cost to them doing so. So as you add up more things that are unique to you and add some of those swishing costs, it will improve your overall brand loyalty. And my protein is prioritizing maybe two methods that also kind of coincide with their focus on more app usage, more app commerce. I think around 5% of the overall commerce of my protein does go through their app right now. But even that little amount is extremely valuable to my protein because it actually lowers the recycle or purchase rate 10 days shorter than they do see through their typical digital shopping experience. So those two programs that my protein has really kind of leaned into right now is the subscribe and gain program, which is just a creative way to say subscribe and save, which has been extremely important subscription services right now, especially with some of the costs and things going up because of inflation, consumers are looking to save money. So if you're able to save five or 10% by just locking in your subscription, that will help you offset some of maybe the short-term price increases. And then secondary, MyProtein has their perks system, which is their loyalty that is going beyond the points and discount focus. This loyalty program also provides value across a number of adjacent categories with partners like Uber Eats, Audible, Anytime Fitness, and HelloFresh. Just want to end on some final thoughts. It's an understatement to say that the current environment of business is tough. You have supply chain issues, you have inflationary cost pressures, you have a tight labor market. And while THG Nutrition and really any of the competitors in the space would love a much easier operating environment, this chaos actually helps THG Nutrition and just THG as a whole in a global commerce perspective. There's a ton of really great things that are going on at THG Nutrition, especially THG, and with the elevated demand for functional beverages, functional foods, nutritional supplements, really sustaining over the long term, this is a long term secular trend that has really just been improved, really sets up THG Nutrition to be extremely valuable long term. I'm projecting really next year that they could get close to reaching over 1 billion in US dollars in revenue in 2022, which would really get you into like a rare air stratosphere of brands that reach that level. If you enjoyed this YouTube video, please consider hitting the like button. Also consider hitting the subscribe button. I currently have a goal of hitting 2000 subscribers soon. You could be a part of that. Currently, you probably are not a subscriber. Yes, I'm talking to you because four-fifths of you, according to Google Analytics, are not subscribed to my channel. Makes me sad. Don't want to be sad too much more. So please consider doing that quick free action. But just want to thank you guys again for tuning in, and I'll see you on the next one.